Hi everyone and welcome back to another video of Petey Bedolphin, yep that's me. I hope you had a great Christmas and a happy new year. I had a lot of fun celebrating my new year actually with a bunch of Terran and fur friends of mine. In today's informational Terran video, we are talking about where does Terran come from? What causes Terran so I want to start this video with a little disclaimer being that it is simply a fact that Terranthropy is not very well studied yet. So there are a lot of studies on the psychological part of Terranthropy, which I will link in the description down below. So the theories that you are seeing in this video are pretty likable. The main categories that all of those theories will be putting into in this video are psychological, neurological, biological and spiritual, with a little side story of Nurture. A big thank you to my Patreon supporters, Call Copier, Bear X, Loka Kazu, Torn Allen, Austin Cyberbronze, and Ara System. Patreon supporters get patron only blogs and videos, early access bloopers, community bug box, and so much more. We're going to start off with Psychological, simply because this will be the easiest, most understandable, and very likable covers behind their hand of it. So, psychologically, we can see that people can identify and experience about everything. The psychological mind is simply very smart, very adaptive. You could see your brain as being a computer. This is a bit of an outdated uh, metaphor, but in my opinion the most easiest to understand. So if you see your brain as a computer, a computer has hardware, which are your screen, your motherboard, like the parts that are in there, and a software, things you download onto your computer and you have there permanently or temporarily. Now you're born with your brain, right? So, so you're born with your hardware. They remain the same largely all of your life. The software are the things that you experience, your emotional states, your experiences, traumatic events, balances being distorted makes your brain download different software. Sometimes it is permanently, sometimes it is temporary. Those are things within life that you download onto your brain and influence how you are. But this known, your brain can download any software. So if you as a child start imprinting on animals because of maybe a traumatic event or maybe not, it could be that your brain downloads the software of an animal. You could download the body map, uh, the experiences, the behaviorisms of this animal. Does this mean that Tarantophy is necessarily a disorder or a mental illness? As much as I would like to agree it isn't a mental illness, there is a way that we could explain Tarantophy as a mental illness. We, we know clinical lycanthropy being the state where you actually believe you're an animal and believe you can physically shapeshift into an animal, usually causing a lot of distress in life and simple impracticality to function in life. Now, Terrans don't have this largely. Terrans largely know they're human and largely have experiences that are very doable. They don't necessarily have any distress. Now, some Terrans have what we're calling species dysphoria. Species dysphoria could be classified as a disorder at some point or another. It isn't at the moment, but we could see species dysphoria as something that causes distress to Terrans because of the fact that they do not have a physical body of an animal and do not have the social or cultural norms that the same animal has. This factor could mean that Tarantophy could maybe be classified as a mental illness depending on the amount of stress it gives the person who experiences it. We have to keep in mind however that Tarantophy doesn't necessarily mean one thing. Tarantophy doesn't necessarily have to be classified as a mental illness to be or come from a mental illness in some people. Psychologically, we could also simply have the perception of an animal. We could perceive ourselves as an animal in a non literal sense, of course. We could have the body map of an animal, we could have the expressions of an animal, it's simply psychological. Unconscious or conscious? Now, for most Terrians, this is a very unconscious experience. Even all of this aside, we could still say that the human mind is so complex that it can psychologically identify as anything. It doesn't have to be more than that. Further on to neurological, we can also see a lot of terrans are clearly neurodiverse. No, it is simply a fact that a very high percentage of terrans have autism. Not all of them do, for example, I personally have been tested multiple times and I don't have autism. And a lot of terrans who do or don't have autism are neurodivergent. For example, I am hypersensitive and I have IDD. There's also an actual research on this which I will all be linking in the description down below. It's also possible that the autism brings out terrans of it. A lot of people with autism are furry, for example, for a reason 
thing that it is very difficult for them to relate to actual humans or and it's simply very obvious that a lot of people with autism end up being turned on. We also think however that it's possible that some people with tyrantrophy are misdiagnosed with autism because of their tyrantrophy. It could simply be that we are born neurologically different or become neurologically different over time and this causes more animalistic experiences causing tyrantrophy. You can have brain damage and from damage in your neurological pathways change and causes you a neurodiverse reaction. For example, I have a minor form of prosopagnosia, aka I'm face blind. I hit my head very badly, I had a concussion, and ever since around that time, I noticed I was face blind. Another reason that tyrantrophy might be neurological is because of phantom limbs. Phantom limbs are the neurological experience of having a limb that isn't actually there. For example, people who are amputees, who have lost a leg or an arm, can still experience this arm or leg. <laughs> First off, damaged nerve endings. When something is cut off, nerve endings remain. This might make the brain believe that something is abruptly stopping and it has to continue. Next to that, there is something called a brain map in the brain. Some people are born without a limp, as a baby on without a leg or a finger or something, and still experience phantom limbs. And this leads us to believe there is something in the brain that we are born with or that we create based on what we see that other people have called a brain map that makes us aware of the limbs that we have. For example, this part of the brain also lights up when we drop something on our feet. Now, if this brain map might be born with, we could say that some people might be born with an animal brain map or more likable if this brain map is a shift depending on what we see on the, in others and how we see ourselves. Maybe some turns imprinted on animals because of seeing themselves as an animal or because of seeing animals around them creating phantom limbs that are not human. Why do those furries who sometimes go deeper into pretending to be an animal than the turns who not have phantom limbs? while the Terran do have phantom limbs. That makes no sense to me. So that leads me to explain Terranthropy as a neurological disorder or a neurological state of being. Next to that we go into biological explanations. There are a few cases that I found where people claim that their parents and their brothers and sisters and their nephews all do have something special with animals. Maybe a certain obsession with the type of animal, like a bear, or maybe they all are turns and other game. This might be because of cultural and uh, social nurture related origins, but this might also be because of something biological. For example, there's a likability of developing mental illnesses like depression in something we carry on and give to our offspring. Maybe species phoria can be passed on. By the way, there's actually some study that neurodiverse might be genetic and might therefore be biological and maybe even be passed on and everything. I will link it in the description down below if you're interested. Next to that, Wolf Van Zandt is a person who is very known in the Terran community and who has a very advanced website with a lot of information. They're super smart. They have a theory related to the Neanderthals. I'm going to put up a few screenshots on the screen actually because it's a bit difficult for me to explain with my limited knowledge. But Wolf Van Zandt has a very great theory actually that he has based on his own experiences and what he has seen that Terrians are Terrians because of a Neanderthal trait. Wolf Van Zandt has the theory of Terrians having genetic roots and genetic traits from Neanderthals rather than from other sapiens. This would be because he sees a lot of Terrians having the typical flaring ribcage of a Neanderthal compared to that of a regular human skeleton, for example. But also different uh, behavioral traits that Terrians have that can be more easily translated back to Neanderthals rather than other sapiens. There's a link in the description down below on this topic on the forum as well as the topic on his website. Maybe it's interesting for you to see. That's about it for biological reasons. No, Terrantrophy is certainly not a sickness that you can catch and then pass on or something. Next is nurture. Nurture is where and how you have been raised. Your parents, your environment. Nurture is directly connected to psychological. Something I have seen and noticed is that a lot of people who grow up in families of furries end up being Terrans. So their parents are furries and not necessarily are not at all Terrans, but their child is a Terran. This might be because we are raised around animals. This might be because we are raised to have more like ability to take on the mental image and the body map of an animal, creating those animalistic experiences that we call Terrantrophy. What could also be 
compare our children. Children who grow up with animals uh, because they have no human parents or because of a traumatic event tend to be neutral animalistic experiences. And even though those feral children are taken out of the situation and put them back into a regular human situation, those people often remain at least to some degree animalistic. So we could say that maybe we teach ourselves those animistic experiences or we got teach them by our environments because of living on a farm or because of being raised by furries or because of raised around dogs and we take those into our system again as i said you could maybe be teaching this yourself we might be telling ourselves i'm a terrian this is who i am i'm a terrian i experience this and this Lastly, we have spiritual. Some people, like my past self and a lot of my friends, claim that their therantophy comes from a spiritual happening. Maybe their soul is not entirely human. Maybe they're connected to a soul or an animal in a different realm, in a different universe, in a different timeline, anything like. Maybe they're connected to a soul or an animal in this world at this moment. Next to that, some Terrans think that their therantophy was gifted to them by God. Jesus or uh, other pagan gods, I don't know them all by name, I'm so sorry, but some people think they are shifting later on in life as well, literally an awakening, so prior they were normal human beings with normal human experiences, but at some point they had an awakening because of maybe a belief or spiritual meditation session or a connection to an actual animal or their dog died and they sold the dog, uh, brought another dog which they became. You might also have roots to Native American beliefs. There are a lot of different examples. I, I simply can't uh, give them up because there are so many. Now, I thank you for listening. I hope it somewhat uh, is explanational theory to you. I hope you somehow learned something new. So yeah, again, thank you so much for watching and I, I love you all. So, um, woof PD.